<clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> my question for you is what does the word re envision mean? Re envision. Re envision. Tell the person that. Okay, who's got an answer? Re envision. Somebody in the back. Re envision. Any ideas? Okay, nobody in the back? Ryan? Recalling the mind. Recalling your mind? Okay. Uh, often students think re envision um, or revision is changing a few words here and there and adding a comma and capitalizing this. So often students confuse revision um, and they think it's only, it only deals with grammatical uh, structures and punctuation and mechanics. Right? But re envision is true. True revision, and it involves looking at your story in a whole new way. <clears throat> so today you're going to start writing another draft, but it's going to be a lot different than the one that you've already done. Nothing you write will be the same, or, or not much of it will be the same. Okay. So to guide us, to guide us through this draft, we have a question that we're going to answer. And that question is, what is my story really about? What's it really about? So it, oh, in the last week, I may have asked you, like uh, in a conference, all right, what's your story really about? What's your story really about? What's your story really about? Fred, I think I've asked you before, what's your story really about? Yeah, I've asked you that. So today, when we work through our drafts, we're going to think about this. We're going to use it to guide us. And I'm going to show you how that could work. So up here, you're familiar with the story arc, the story mountain? Well, this one's called the double mountain. <coughs> Have you seen this one before? Well, on top, the top one is the external story. So this is the physical things that are happening outside of the main character. Right? This is what's happening in the story. The bottom one is the internal story. So this is what's happening inside our characters. So our story has to weave both of these together. Right? So we know what's happening and we know what our characters are feeling. Okay. Now you see... I got these blue and red, blue and red circles around the events, right? So the X's are events on my timeline, right? If you're writing this in your notebook, you're going to be describing what these events are, okay? Well, I've got blue and red ones there. And you're probably asking, what is, why are they blue and why are they red? Okay, so remember that story I told you <coughs> about... How on a Wednesday night when I was a kid, my dad brought home the race car, the, the, the remote control car. And, you know, it had lots of parts. Um, definitely too difficult for me as an 11 year old or 12 year old to put together. And he said, we got to wait until Saturday morning, until the weekend, and then we'll, we'll build it together. You remember that story? So that's my story, right? That's my personal narrative that I'm writing. And if I ask myself, what's it really about? One option might be, it's about a boy who learns that his father understands him. Right, so when I say what's it really about, we're going out of the story, right, beyond the text. Like it's not about Mr. Rago anymore. It's about a boy who learns that his father understands him. That's the story. Right? That's what it's about. Okay. Another po possible uh, deeper meaning of that story might be 
learning the value of patience. Right? So I might decide in the story that I'm going to focus on learning how to be patient rather than the relationship with me and my dad. Right? Do you see how those two things are different? So with every story, there are several uh, like deep meanings that we can take from them. Okay, so what the author does, the author chooses one that's going to be the main. We don't do that. Okay, can you move for me? Move away from Fred and his shoes. Put yourself in a spot where you won't touch anybody's shoelaces. Thank you. So what the author does. Okay, they get to decide what's my story really about, and then they choose to uh, include or remove parts of the existing story. Okay, so like these events. Okay, if it's a red one, as the author, I'm going to say I, I need to include this because it helps convey this message. Right, it provides information that helps me convey message one. Blue ones, I gotta include this because it helps me convey message two. Right? And I have one message that I want to convey. Right? So tell the person next to you what the two possible meanings are of my story. So tell the person next to you. Hmm? No, of my story. Mr. Rago's car story. What are the two possible meanings or messages? So, what could it be about? Tom? So maybe the value of patience, and then mom and dad know more than we think. Right? That could be another lesson in there. Right? No fool in mom and dad. Good. Now, for you guys, I want you to figure out. I've got two. These are two uh, small scenes that I have in my flash draft, right? And I'm, I'm deciding: should I keep it? Should I leave it out? Should I expand one and elaborate more? Right now, I want you. I want to see if you can match these scenes to these meanings. All right. So you're going to read both of these and say, "A, it would be good to include this one in story one or two, and then tell me why." Here's the wrong. You know what you're going to do? Explain it to the class. Can somebody help? What are we going to do? Tom? Wait, there's one of two versions, but it's not exist to each meaning to remove of your story. No. You're, you're thinking too much. You're just going to match. Match this little scene with, this, with the deeper meaning that it could support. So let's do, let's do it together. After dinner on Thursday night, remember my dad brought the thing home on Wednesday. After dinner on Thursday night, my dad walked through the dining room and glanced at the table. Noticing the box, he stopped. I was standing behind him, watching his every move, and my heart filled my shoes. The 30 seconds he spent looking at the box felt like a week. Beads of sweat, sweat raced down my face like Olympic skiers. A few more days, he said, and walked off. Now that little scene right there, that little moment, okay? Which big idea, which message would that support? So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna, I'm gonna say, on the count of three, put up your finger. 
And you're going to do this one for story one, this one for story two. Don't give me the daddy finger. <laughs> right? No. Daddy finger is the middle finger. Uh -huh. Don't do that. <laughs> so, if you, think, if you think A matches story one, you'll hold up one. If you think it matches story two, you'll hold up two. Take a moment to, to think to yourself and have a plan. Okay. One, two, three, go. Okay, I think we got like an 80%. So this matches story one. Right? Because this moment, it shows my dad kind of examining the box. Right? And later in the story, I'm going to learn that he knew all along I had opened it. So this, this piece about him noticing the box and looking at it for a little bit, and me feeling nervous, it's connected to that deeper meaning. Right, now this next one. I sat staring at the box, wondering what, what was inside. Honestly, I don't remember at Christmas when I felt this excited to get a new toy. Nick and George, my buddies, were already outside racing their cars. Why not just bring the dumb thing home on Saturday morning, I said to myself in disgust. It felt like a game my parents were playing with me, and they were winning. I gently began to move closer to the box. Okay, so this one I would use if I were writing about the value of patience. Because this one shows kind of the struggle inside me dealing with not being able to open up my, my car and put it together, right? So for you guys, as you rewrite today, as you re-envision, you're gonna let what your story is really about guide the decisions you make as you write, okay? So to get started with this, what I want you to do is create a timeline in your notebook right now. Okay, and this is your new version of the same story. Okay, and you're going to think about what is, what's it really about, and then what events, which scenes must I highlight to truly convey that message. Okay, so the way it's going to work now, I'm going to give you a minute or two to, to make your, your timeline. You're going to share your timeline with the person next to you on the carpet. And just kind of show them your timeline and talk about what's there. After that, you're going to go back to your seat and you'll have time to tell, tell each other the new version of your story. Okay, so right now, you've got two minutes to create a timeline. So you should be writing. Writing. 